In September, Uganda paid the Democratic Republic of the Congo $65 million as war reparations. This follows an order by the International Court of Justice in February ordering Uganda to pay $325 million for killings, loot and damage caused during its occupation of the DRC in the 90s. The amount paid in September is the first of five such installments. What was the case presented by the DRC and is this the beginning of ensuring justice for the victims? Kambale Musavuli of Centre for Research on the Congo explains. It's a historic day, right? It's a historic uh, week, actually, you know, to think about that today. Um, Uganda has paid reparation to Congo, right? The, the first payment came. Uh, this comes from the history of conflict that we've had in DRC. Since 1996, uh, there has been a war in the Congo waged by US allies, Rwanda and Uganda. Uh, they've invaded the Congo twice in 1996 and 98. And up until today, uh, they continue to support proxy rebel militias. But in 2000, around 2003, uh, the Congolese government at the time decided uh, to take to court uh, Uganda and Rwanda actually. Uh, they, they went to the International Court of Justice uh, to sue these two countries for war crimes, for crimes against humanity, for pilfering of Congo's resources. Uh, the court heard the case. In the end of the case, they dismissed the case against Rwanda. Uh, the reason they gave for dismissing the case is that uh, they did not have jurisdiction uh, to try Rwanda as a country at the ICJ, uh, simply because Rwanda has never signed the Rome Treaty. Um, the United States is one of the countries also that um, have not signed the Warm Treaty. So the court found itself inadequate to look at the case for Rwanda. But for Uganda, you know, Uganda is a party to the Rome Statute. So the ICJ uh, is, has, was created uh, from uh, the funding document of the Rome Statute. So that given that Uganda uh, signed uh, the Rome statute, the, the courts found itself uh, adequate to actually try Uganda. Um, they went through a vigorous pro process, uh, judges and the lawyers for both countries. And in the end of the process, the court in 2005 found Uganda guilty of war crimes, uh, crimes against humanity and pilfering of Congo's resources and displacement of uh, population and so on. Um, so in 2005, at the time, um, there was um, a statement for RCJ that Uganda will have to pay about $10 billion of reparations. And those were the damages that the Congolese government was seeking uh, for what they did in the DRC. And from 20, 2005 to now, uh, there, there's been a lot of back and forth about the amount for reparations. Right. So one, already the court in 2005 found Uganda guilty of um, you know, pilfering Congo's resources, killing Congolese civilians, being an occupying force in the DRC. Then about uh, sometime last year, the case came back up because Uganda hadn't paid reparation to the DRC and there was no final judgment saying what the amount will be. So the judges again heard in Congo and Rwanda and in the end, uh, the court decided that the damages, the values for reparation will be uh, upward of $300 million, about 365 or, or such. Of course, Uganda stated that you know, they cannot pay it. But the, now we see Uganda has made this first payment. So I'm not looking at the dollar amount of what Uganda is actually paying, right? I'm looking at the original reason why we are where we are. The Congo sued one of his neighbors, actually two of his neighbors. One was not, uh, the case was not heard because of jurisdiction. The other, the country was found guilty and in being found guilty and being sentenced and judgment being disclosed, they are making the payment. So Uganda today is saying, yes, we've, we invaded the Congo, we pay for Congo's resources, and we kill civilians. So that's a huge victory for justice seekers. Uh, we do believe that 300, over $300 million is not enough for the crimes that it committed. But the, the fact that Uganda is making the payment is the acknowledgement uh, from Uganda that they have committed crimes in the Congo.
While Uganda has begun paying reparations, Rwanda has still not been brought to justice for its crimes during the same period. What attempts have been made to pressurize Rwanda and how is it that both these countries continue to support insurgencies and intervene militarily in the affairs of the DRC? It's very important also to understand this context. Uh, the ICJ, International Court of Justice, and the ICC, the International Criminal Court, are two bodies coming out of the Rome Statute. So we know that at the ICJ, Uganda has been found guilty, right? And they've been sentenced. There is a judgment, and they are paying 65, they just paid $65 million from uh, the amount given for damages, right? For reparations for DRC. So in a normal uh, situation, the International Criminal Court, the ICC, should look into this case, right? So it's, there is a civil suit, and there also need to be a criminal uh, suit. In the civil suit, it's already determined that Uganda has paid for Congo's resources. Uganda has committed crimes of uh, war crimes. And they have displaced population and so on. So the question should be asked, why isn't the ICC, the International Criminal Court, looking into Uganda for these same war crimes, crimes against humanity and people and Congo's resources? Because it's the same statute, that's one. The second one is uh, what uh, the, the case against Rwanda. No, Rwanda did not uh, get tried because of jurisdiction. But given that Uganda was found guilty at the ICJ, more than likely, they will find also Rwanda guilty if he was actually properly tried, right? So that, that means that for the past two decades, international bodies have had information about Congo's wars, about the invasions of Congo by its neighbors, Rwanda and Uganda, but these nations have continued to uh, engage, temper, and uh, interfere in Congolese politics uh, through invasions, through war, through pilfering of Congo's resources, unabated. And that's, that should be, that's almost like the, the most important element to look at, that how come Rwanda is not being held accountable? So you look at Rwanda's partners internationally, for example, the United Kingdom, which has decided to send um, refugees seeking asylum into Rwanda for processing, right? They are using Rwanda as a contractor for processing refugees seeking asylum in the UK. Why is the UK engaging with uh, Rwanda at that level? The United States is the same. They have a military agreement with the Rwandan government. Um, they have not stopped any military training, uh, any military support they provide to the Rwandan government. And they have the same information uh, that we have. Um, I believe this culture of impunity is what has caused the conflict in Congo to continue up until today. Over 6 million Congolese people have died. It's almost as we're saying that people can come to the Congo, loot Congo's resources, kill Congolese civilians, and nothing will actually happen to them. And because of the cultural impunity, as I just mentioned, war continues. We believe for peace and stability to happen in the DRC, we need to have justice. There need to be a case open back up at the ICC. There is no case uh, against uh, Uganda at the ICC for the crimes of Uganda. There need to be more international pressure on uh, Rwanda and Uganda's part partners. I said that if you are not a stakeholder for peace in the DRC, we are not going to use our taxpayers' money to support uh, this oppressive regime. And lastly, which is the call from the Congolese population, uh, though we know there is a ICJ ruling and a judgment of over $300 million given for reparation, we still believe that we need to implement the recommendation of the UN Mapping Exercise Report. The UN Mapping Exercise Report that was published in 2010, October 1st, 2010, said that what's happening in the Congo is a war crime, crime against humanity, and possible genocide if proven in the competent court. And this report calls for a mechanism for justice for DRC. A, it's proposing a tribunal, an international tribunal for Congo. It's also proposing if not that, you can look at a special chamber, Miss Chambers created um, to look at the cases of uh, crimes in the DRC. The Congolese people are calling for that. You know, we believe that justice is not negotiable. 
using the word of Dr. Denis Mukwege, the Nobel Peace Prize. We must have justice to have uh, peace and stability. The judgment against Uganda is a step in the right direction. The first payment is a step uh, in the right direction. We know that it should be more, but we must continue, continue, continue to push for justice for the RC. Without justice, there cannot be peace. Thank you.